Hey everyone. Let me jump to the chat. Okay. So yeah, uh, thanks Nate for this intro. I'm Costa from Mixbytes. I'm the CPO, and we also have Dima here, who is our CTO. And um, yeah, we are the team behind the Lido on Polkadot and Kusama. And that's why we are talking about uh, the liquid staking and the, its utilization in the Moonbeam and the Polkadot space. So there is a kind of tricky part because we are at first mixed bytes and we are a company that was formerly mostly known as a security auditing company. We've been working with Curve, One Inch, and Lido, definitely, and uh, many other great teams for like by performing security audits for them. And uh, we also do have some other initiatives in that field. We do have a farm. Uh, which is an educational course which makes a developer a security auditor. And we also have a camp where some uh, interested uh, professionals do get into a crowd to make that crowdly based uh, audits as well. So if you're interested in that part, we are mostly up to developing this space as well. Uh, please get in touch. and. Um, uh, Dima is our CTO, so he is uh, one of the team who is like mostly behind this, uh, making this be possible to happen. So this is one part, and uh, one day after Mixbytes uh, felt uh, secure enough to get into the DeFi products to bring something to stage on uh, from ourselves, we've uh, reached out to LIDA and proposed to deliver LIDA on Polkadot and Kusama. So we are now a part of LIDA DAO and we are responsible for those two networks. And today we are talking mostly as a, a team behind those two uh, protocols. So uh, let's see what do we have here and what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we definitely know about Polkadot stake and, and we have a, just a basic dot in the relay chain staked. And another thing is that when we get to Moonbeam, we get another representation of it, which is an XC dot. And uh, what if I told you that while having the initial dot staked, you may have it still liquid. And in this case, you have two more assets on the stage, which are ST dot and wrapped ST dot, which we will touch base uh, and cover today. And uh, speaking about what is behind, what is under the hood of a staked dot, we should definitely cover the validators and nominators part, the XCM format, smart contracts and all those behind it, and definitely the utilization, which is what we are doing this for. So let's start with validators and nominators because like this is what the staking is about. And since the very first day of us being on that topic, we've been crawling and gathering all the data available for that staking uh, operations in the network. And we've observed a lot of things, but one that I'd like to highlight now is that the performance, the overall performance of the validators nodes in the network it could be better. So if we say that the average APR for all the state dots, which is around the half, like 51% for today, uh, and the APR without fees counted, because that's a tricky part to count, uh, it is around 14%. And the quarter of all the dots staked is getting APR lower than this average. And what is worse, there is a tiny part, which is around 2.3% for now, which is being staked with an APR even lower than the inflation, which is 7.9 or something for today. So here is a list of just kind of random numbers from the top uh, stakes uh, and all of them is kind of being diluted right now. So if you are the owner of one of those addresses, you may definitely consider doing something with your stake, stake because it is not performing in the way it is most probably expected to be. Uh, there are some other things that do happen around that staking. 
uh, part. So the first one uh, that we are addressing here is that the assets are kind of getting frozen and you that, that means you get no additional leverage on top of them. Another one, uh, if you deal with staking yourself, is that you have to get into the active set. So that means that you have to pick validator nodes precisely to be sure that it gets a higher chance of getting there. Another one is that you may uh, occasionally rely on an underperforming node, which lead, may lead you to, uh, to a lower APR than expected. Another thing is that you are stuck with an unbonding period, which is 28 days and Polkadot, and uh, those are the dates you can do. You do not play, uh, act, act with your, do not play with your dots again. And another one is that uh, about UI UX, uh, which I definitely should mention because today is an international UI UX day. And that is something that uh, hopefully Polkadot team is, it, it, Polkadot team has already delivered a lot on that space and the staking UI is getting much and much better, but still it can lead to some confusion, especially for the newcomers, for those not familiar with some technical sides of that. So those are the things that you will definitely face while staking on your own and we are trying and we are successfully addressing them with liquid staking solutions. So speaking about that validators and nominators part about the underperforming, you may see a few different issues on that side. So the first one is that the validator may have a non-optimal server configuration on the node, which leads, as I already covered, uh, to a lower APR possible because of getting less uh, points and less score. And another one is uh, validator not having a small own stake, which you may track somehow, but uh, that takes a lot of work from your side. Another one is a node oversubscription, which like kind of makes you get less APR again. And the worst one is when the node is improperly maintained. Uh, hopefully, we do not meet this like any any way on our way, uh, but and we haven't actually faced this just only a few times. Maybe we've seen that in the network, but uh, that may lead to a slash an event when uh, a validator node is punished and your stake is under the risk. So that were the issues, and here is the solution. Here we come to the setup which makes us resolve all the stated above. Uh, that is actually why we are here, and that is actually why we are working and having a collaboration with Moonbeam, because Moonbeam brings some magic into the space, and actually Moonbeam was the first part chain to get, X, uh, get EVM uh, support in front of us. And that is uh, something that makes us put the business logic on the parachain side and operate in solidity, uh, whatever we'd like. And this is something we are highly profound at. And on one side and on the other side, there is still an XC compatibility and there is still a way to get out to the relay chain so that Getting into the Moonbeam team, which is not just only great, like because of great people behind it, but also behind all these features that are being supported. So EVM plus XC, that is where the magic happens. And that is something that made us, uh, made us deliver this. Uh, that is an overall scheme of what happens behind the Lido on Polkadot. So on the top part of the scheme, you may see what happens in the Moonbeam and the parachain. And on the bottom side, there is something that happens on the relay chain. So if we just quickly walk through the scheme, we may see that if when someone, let's say Alice deposits, uh, she then interacts with a Lido on Polkadot or Kusama, whatever, uh, DApp, uh, via UI, and there is a Lido smart contract behind that, which gets uh, feed from uh, the Oracle side, which 
uh, again, lets us uh, get some info from the relay chain, which is like inaccessible in other circumstances. Then uh, we have to kind of mirror the uh, stashes. So the um, relay chain staking happens via the stashes and we have to manage it somehow on parachain as well. That's why we do have them uh, represented here like and linked one to one. We'll cover this uh, a bit later. And then uh, using that XEM format messages, we do have a controller sending them and operating those dots on the relay chain now. And uh, there are some certain methods behind this. We can call uh, the specific uh, events that do let us handle all this business logic. Like let's say if uh, a user, um, we uh, we have uh, okay. Uh, so we we have to like let's say someone comes to make a staking uh, event uh, supported and he has to make a bond and uh, if he has to get his stake out then there is a special call called unbond. So what uh, actually operates all of that is a relay encoder which is. Uh, has been delivered by Moonbeam themselves, but uh, because of the fact that at the time of us deploying the Polkadot part, it was not ready yet. We have it delivered by ourselves, but that combo of relay encoder and XCM transactor makes all these calls being available to manipulate it through from the EVM part to the uh, relay chain and the polka dot itself. So when we are keep on talking about the setup, uh, we should definitely mention the validator permissionless selection because actually there are a few types of approach we may do uh, have here. And one is when you have some predefined validators and those you have an agreement with and they are covering like uh, uh, and they like committed to work with your network but we used another way we've decided to be fully decentralized and we've decided to have it in a permissionless way that is why we have um, as i mentioned before that is why we started gathering all the data available and ranking, just basically making a rank of all the validators node, all the validator nodes in the space, in the network, and uh, having uh, error points and APR, the stake amount and all of that covered at any given moment of time. And having a history of that, uh, we may just uh, get the top list of those validators and nominate uh, the stake that is being brought by users to the best performing ones. And that is where our uh, algo, algo is working. And that is where our dynamic relocation comes into play. So in case of like very rare but possible slashing event, we may observe that instantly and redistribute that stake to the uh, non uh, to this to the validators nodes with uh, that event being non occurred so uh, apart from that uh, we do have a slash and hedging covered as well so that thing is about that not putting all the stake in one place because like let's say if you have this like rare but possible event happen then you put all of the stake on the risk but having it distributed uh, in a proportional way between a few ledgers, then you spread this risk and you hedge it. Uh, this is something we uh, do cover as well. And also uh, because of the uh, careful and precise studying and modeling of, of the all the events happening during staking and having those long-term and short-term simulations, we've decided to have three validators nominated from each ledger. 
So all of that makes us perform better. All of that makes us not to get into that lower than average APR part. But in order to deliver this to users, you have also to, to show something. And that is where the UI comes into play. And uh, apart from having that obvious staking part, the one thing that we definitely have should have covered is the transfer part, which is about bringing your dot from the relay chain to the parachain. chain, because uh, as we've mentioned, we are operating in the Moonbeam parachain, chain, but the dots are being staked in the relay chain. So you have to get your dot into the parachain, chain. And that is what we do cover inside the uh, user interface as well. Uh, and another thing is that we've been kind of aiming towards too is a part of being your of your dot being not frozen. Uh, you should definitely have some kind of utilization for that, and that is why we show additional DeFi options that you may have um, uh, for for your stake dot or Kusama. And another two things that we like think that are good to have as the staking start. So. At any given moment, you may check what ledgers uh, we do operate with, what um, uh, what stashes are nominated at, and so so on. And another one is the calculator that should let you know like what rewards, what uh, amounts have accrued on top of your uh, of your stake. Uh, another thing. Uh, about utilization is that apart from bringing the common options to the play, uh, having a DEX and aggregator and uh, landing, and maybe later on a stable and so on, which we do already have. And thanks for our great partners, we have already pools and curve and beam stop and stellar swap. And there are also a beefy vault for that. Uh, and just yesterday we had a Midas landing pool launch. So for those who've been willing to get some leverage on top of your dots, you may do that now, finally. And uh, there is also a tricky thing here. So as I've mentioned, there is a staked version of a dot and there is a wrapped staked version. The difference between them is the staked one is a rebasable one because there could be two different approaches to uh, having uh, your interest bearing tokens implemented. The first one is a rebasable approach when you have your amount increased over the time with uh, rewards coming in. And uh, another one is uh, that, but not all of the protocols on the DeFi space to support them like Curve does, but some do not. And a much more safer way is to have it, like in our case, it is a wrapped version. And uh, uh, in this case, you have the amount the same, you have its value increase. So you have kind of a share of a pool and when rewards come into that pool, it makes uh, it more expensive and that's why the value grows. And this is kind of the only option for, a in, for an interest bearing token to be transferred between the party chains. And that is something we are being stick to uh, in further implementations and integrations as well. Uh, one of the last things I wanted to cover is that apart from the previously stated issues, there is one dealt that there is one when users have to deal with uh, some initial gas, they, especially for the newcomers, when it is the first time you are doing any operation in any blockchain, actually, not just only in Moonbeam, uh, you do not know all this talk, what are all these tokens uh, about and uh, where to get them. So that's why we've decided to build a faucet into the DEP so that one may get some for the first transfers. Another thing is that you definitely have to get an Oracle and we are happy that those guys, uh, that those cool guys as Chainlink, for example, also have started supporting Moonbeam uh, and we already have an DIA uh, Oracle set up and running. So if someone is willing to get an ST dot and raise the dot price, uh, 
you may do that via DIA. And uh, last but not least, our the wallets. So thank you, all the guys who do start supporting Moonbeam as well. So Encrypt, so Wallet, Nova, Talisman, and other great guys. Uh, you do a great job because handling for, for a user, handling the part where you deal both with the relay chain dot and the party chain XC dot is uh, like more than tricky. And that is cool that there are uh, solutions to get that uh, resolved. So actually, this is something I wanted to cover here. Maybe there is some tech side notes that uh, I probably missed and maybe Dima would like to add, or maybe we have some questions here. But yeah, that, 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 that's like wrap for the, for the main part.